Welcome. This is Jeff Chandler and I'm an associate coach with Vanguard Endurance out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today in this presentation we're going to look at using Training Peaks online software to not only track your fitness and record your workouts but to use some of Training Peaks powerful features that allow for planning for peak performance. Hope you enjoy the show and find the information useful. Going out Riding hard with your friends will certainly increase your fitness. A structured training plan prescribed by a good coach will more than likely increase your fitness even more. But the true challenge for an athlete is not just to be fitter or faster at some random point in the season, but it's to be your fittest exactly when you want to be fittest, presumably just in time for your A race. What do you need then for a peak performance? Athletes often talk about a peak of fitness as having good form. When you talk to athletes about form, they describe it as a day when the legs just didn't hurt, a day to rip the cranks off, a day when I was just on. These are all ways of describing form or peak of fitness. So what exactly is form? During the Tour de France, the riders are riding for um, three weeks solid, and at the end of it, you could argue that they were certainly very, very fit. They've exercised very, very hard every day. But they're not very fresh. So they're not fresh enough to have good form. They would not race well at the end of the Tour de France. On the other side of the coin, after a two-month layoff, they might very well be uh, extremely fresh, but they're not going to be very fit. So form is the correct balance of fitness and freshness. So what exactly is fitness then? It's a response to training stress. A dose of training is given to an athlete. The athlete adapts and responds positively to that dose, which, in, uh, which creates improvements. So fitness is the result of ever-increasing training stress to uh, create an increase in fitness. Another way of thinking about the overload principle that we just talked about is uh, an old fable that tells of a boy who every day carried his pet calf to work. Over the next year, the boy's body adjusted to the work and made him stronger and stronger. Had the weight of the calf never increased, the boy's strength would have quickly plateaued. However, the calf did gradually get bigger and created a continual increased stress in the boy's body over the months. Another way to increase the training load would have been to have him increase the duration of his, his walk. So the two things we need to be very scientific in our training is a way to measure duration and intensity. This is exactly what a power meter does for us. It measures and records intensity and duration. It measures intensity in watts, which is a metric equivalent to horsepower. One horsepower equals 745 watts. Now with this tool at our disposal, we need to do a test to determine what our functional threshold power is. This is the number that we're going to be using in training peaks. With the accurate power measurement and recording capabilities of our power meter, we can easily perform tests to determine our functional threshold power. Functional threshold power is defined as the average power you produce during an all-out one-hour effort. So you could go out and do a one-hour time trial and hope nothing goes wrong during that extended test, but experts have developed shorter test protocols that are pretty accurate. Knowing your FTP is the key to using your power meter and realize as your fitness changes you'll need to retest. Once FTP is determined, enter into Training Peaks. Training Peaks will then calculate your training zones for you. I like to copy and print this out and keep it handy. I've even been known to tape it to a, to a water bottle using packing tape. Now you and your coach have a common language to use in specifying workout intensities. You and or your coach has the ability in Training Peaks to enter workouts into the future for planning purposes. This workout session is using training zones to indicate very specific intensities for the specified durations. This one reads, warm up for 20 minutes starting out in zone 1 and gradually increase to zone 2, then do four 10 minute efforts, 10 minute repeats, increasing the effort from zone 4 to zone 5 during the 10 minute repeat. To quantify the total training stress of a workout or group of workouts, we use Training Stress Score, TSS. 
TSS is the duration and the intensity based on power meter data. A TSS score of 100 is the amount of stress placed on your body resulting from a one hour highly motivated gun to your head all out effort. So basically TSS of 100 equals a one hour time trial. You can also earn a TSS of 100 by riding at 50 percent of your functional threshold power for two hours. Once your FTP is entered into training peaks from that point forward training peaks will automatically compute the TSS for that ride. Since TSS is relative to your functional threshold power, it works as a way to quantify training load of any athlete regardless of their ability. With TSS we now have a number to quantify every workout regardless if it was a five hour race or short recovery spin. Here you can see the coach put in this workout and uh, it was planned to be an hour 45 minutes long. In the description there it talks about the details of the workout and then the coach predicted that if it was done if the workout was done as prescribed he'd have a TSS of 130. After this athlete did the workout um, he had a TSS of 128.5. Okay putting TSS into practice. Say one week you do long endurance rides five days of the week. The next week you do two endurance rides and three real hard hour-long group rides. How did the two weeks compare? Which was harder? Well, TSS will tell you. It will give you a number. TSS is a much better indicator for training load than distance ridden or hours ridden since the score takes into account both intensity and duration and it is also relative to the athlete's own personal functional threshold. Let's move on now to the performance manager. This is a chart that Training Peaks automatically makes for you. Most athletes record number of miles or time ridden per workout or per day or per week or per year, but really this has a limited value compared with the precision of recording workouts using TSS. The performance manager is a very powerful tool used to track your training based on TSS, and it will also chart future planned workouts that you've put in your calendar which can be used to plan for peak races. The performance manager keeps a one week and six week moving TSS average. It also incorporates in a logarithm to quantify fitness versus rest like we discussed earlier. The fitness or form you have today is a result of your cumulative training load, CTL. That is the amount of work you've done in the past six weeks. It's also the result of your acute training load, ATL. That is the amount of work that you've done in the past week. And since form is defined as fitness and freshness, your fitness is also a result of rest versus fitness, or what we call training stress balance, TSB. TSB results the balance of training stress, or how well you've been juggling your training load and your rest periods. If we consider that your TSB is a numerical value and a positive number would indicate you would have a good chance of riding well on those positive days and would suggest that you are both fit and fresh. While if your TSB was negative number then it would mean that you are most likely tired from a high train load which would possibly consist of both a high CTL and a high ATL. So here's our performance manager. Uh, we actually see three graphs uh, superimposed on top of each other. We've got our chronic training load, or our CTL, which is the blue line. And then we've got our acute training load, which is the uh, purple line. And then we have our training stress balance, which is the brown line down here. And um, so let's look at um, this athlete's performance managing chart. And um, let's see what uh, sense we can make out of this data. So right here on uh, July 29th this athlete's training volume peaked and this is when cyclocross training, uh, specific cyclocross training started. And um, so you can see right here we had an acute training load of 139, that's an average of 139 TSS over the past six days. 
The chronic training load was 111. That's an average of 111 TSS over the past six weeks. And um, then we had a training stress balance of minus 25.7. So we had dug a pretty good hole here, which you can kind of see visually. And um, in the training volume, we started to decrease it slightly and um, moving more towards cyclocross specific workouts, which were uh, short, very short, intense efforts. And until this point right here, we were mainly focused on increasing threshold and increasing enough volume that when racing season started, um, we could handle the decreased um, training load and still not lose fitness. So um, we uh, picked a date midway through the season um, to peak for. Since we didn't have one specific race, we wanted to have a an A, a race. We picked midway through the season. And so here on um, uh, October 12th, we have a positive training stress balance of 32.1. And our um, chronic training load has dropped to 86.5 at this point. And um, so this is essentially a little bit of a taper. We were slowly reducing the training load. And then here actually took um, uh, an easy week and a half. And this gave us this uh, really high training stress balance. Not coincidentally, this athlete had his best cyclocross race of his career uh, on October 12th. Not only can this performance chart uh, post data that, that you've uploaded, but if you have a coach that's posting workouts, this will put a dotted line showing your what the TSS scores would be, what your training stress balance would be into the moving into the future. So planning these peak performances is not a matter of guesswork or, or going by feel. We can see exactly how much time it would take and what kind of workouts it would take to get the reduced training load to get the big nice spike in our um, training stress balance. Therefore, um, uh, tapering and, and peaking for peak performance no longer becomes um, a guesswork. It becomes much more data-driven, uh, scientific, repeatable, which is exactly what we're aiming for.